Hello everyone, and welcome to Sunburned Albino Rates, the top 20 new passive items in the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. This list will not include items that were in the original Binding of Isaac, and for purposes of making another video, it will not contain familiars either. Let's get started. Number 20. There's options. Are you tired of facing pestilence and thinking, shit, cube of meat? While you're in luck, There's Options is available at a shop near you for the low, low price of 15 cents, and it is well worth every penny. The earlier you get it, the better, as There's Options increases the item pedestal spawned after defeating a boss from 1 to the much higher value of 2, though you still only get to pick one item. Boss items dictate how your run is going to progress. Getting to have a choice between Magic 8-Ball and Magic Mushroom is a giant benefit. Number 19. Death's Touch. Death's Touch make you shoot scythes out of your goddamn face, and you think there are 18 more items better than that? What's wrong with you? A lot, actually, but I stand by this decision. Death's Touch's value, in the eyes of the public, is due largely to the visual effect of its tier. That is half the hype. The other half is the part that actually affects your run, and that would be the damage up in piercing shots. Death's Touch is a novelty item. Its usefulness is inarguable, but its charm is running out to the point where I only take it about half the time. That being said, it's still an effective item that will always improve your run. Number 18, Thunder Thighs. While not desirable in real life, Thunder Thighs and Rebirth opens many possible doors. Thunder Thighs increases your HP by 1, lowers your speed, and gives you the stompy effect, which is one of my favorite effects in this game. It allows you to crush rocks simply by walking over them, meaning free access to tinted rocks, the creation of rock bridges, and the occasional black market. If you've got the lucky rock trinket, you just became an instant millionaire. Number 17, Cricket's Body. Tears up, range down. That's a great trade in and of itself, but Cricket's body takes it four steps further by spawning four smaller tiers that branch out in different directions when the initial tier hits the floor or an enemy. Lay waste to groups of enemies in a timely fashion by assaulting their ankles with baby projectiles. It's an effective method. Number 16, Eve's Mascara. It doubles your damage. I mean, the hell do you want? Sure, it halves your tier's stat and lowers shot speed, but those things are meaningless compared to the sheer brute force you'll be dishing out. And it scales terrifically with other damage ups. Make them drown in your big ass bubbles of sadness. Number 15, Goat Head. Angel and Devil rooms can be pesky in their habit of not showing up, and having to not take red heart damage can be a tall order if spirit hearts refuse to drop. Enter Goat Head. Goat Head guarantees you either a devil or angel room on every floor from the second one onwards, besides, you know, like the cathedral and stuff. Not only that, but it makes sure those doors stay open, no matter how many times you enter and exit them. Super useful for rerolls. Goathead is an item that's so good and such a no-brainer, the game actually punishes you for not picking it up. If Goathead appears on a floor and you don't take it, even if you never saw where it was, you get no devil or angel rooms for the rest of the run. You know why? Because when you are called upon by a deity to make a sacrifice, you don't get to just say no. And they don't care for your excuses. Do the right thing. Get Goathead. Number 14, Ludovico Technique. Let's assume that I pronounce this correctly. The Ludovico Technique is an item that gives you a single large tier that you control with your shoot directional buttons. You make it hover around and do continuous damage to whatever it touches. This is an item that gets shit on because it fundamentally changes, the, makes you change the way you play the game, but it is good in every situation if you've practiced enough. Increase your damage to increase the damage per tick, increase tiers to increase the rapidness of the ticks, and shot speed to speed up how fast you can move the tier. When you've got good stats, Ludovico Technique tears ass, then it crawls inside and sets up camp because that ass is now the property of Ludovico Technique. Number 13, Sad Bombs. Congratulations to the only bomb item that makes this list. Uh, spoiler. Sad Bomb's usefulness depends on you. If you've got great tiers, you've got great bombs. If you have mediocre tiers, you still got bombs that shoot tiers in all directions, and even just the concept of that is cool enough to carry you to this spot. Number 12, The Mind. The mind outclasses and renders obsolete all other mapping items. Map, blue map, compass, toss out that garbage, you've got the mind, which combines all three of them to show you every possible thing that can be revealed to you about the floor you're on, aside from enemy formations. Plotting your route just became a cakewalk. Number 11, Paraptosis. When I saw Proptosis for the first time floating above that item pedestal, all I could think was that looks like fucking torture, which translates to a very nice tear effect. Proptosis shots start out huge, then decrease in size and power as they travel, like a reverse lump of coal. If you like to get up close and personal with your enemies, Proptosis turns you into a wrecking ball of destruction, and even if you don't, just pick up a couple range upgrades and you'll be dealing doom from a distance directly. Number 10. Abaddon. 
Abaddon is the ultimate devil deal. It increases your damage substantially, grants you six black hearts, and gives you a chance to shoot fear shots. I mean, sure, it takes all of your red heart containers, regardless of what you paid for it, but if you can't survive on six black hearts with that boosted power, you should be practicing a lot more. I would trade 12 red hearts for Abaddon without hesitation in any situation. It truly is a godsend. Number nine, Humbling Bundle. One plus one free forever? Count me in. Humbling Bundle makes all consumables that can drop in pairs guaranteed to drop in pairs. That's twice the coins, bombs, keys, and red hearts. How much is having plenty of every consumable for the rest of the game worth to you? It's a lot to me. Pair this up with Contract from Below, and you'll be positively swimming in loot. Number eight, Contract from Below. Why does Contract from Below just barely outdo Humbling Bundle? Because Contract from Below makes all rooms drop two of whatever room drop it was planning on doing. That includes tarot cards, runes, pills, and chests, even golden chests. Getting the chance to spawn two golden chests per room, the possible payouts are endless, especially when they result in items. Number seven, Tech Point Five. Technology is okay. Tech Two can be powerful. But for my money, there's nothing like pure objective benefit when it comes to Tech Point 5. See, Tech Point 5 doesn't change your tiers, or your damage, or anything. It just plants an extra laser on top of your head that randomly fires with whatever else you're shooting. It's like attaching a laser gun to a machine gun. It's only going to increase your damage output. Plus it scales with your damage and copies your tier effects. I rarely pick up technology, and I only pick up Tech 2 if my damage is already strong. But Tech Point 5 is welcome anytime. Number 6. Holy Mantle. The greatest benefit I see with Holy Mantle is the ability to enter and exit curse rooms for free. You can't use it to cheat blood banks. Holy Mantle nullifies one hit of damage you take per room. You can get hit once every single room of the game and never lose a single heart. Now, Mr. Albino, why don't you think that's the most amazing thing you've ever experienced? Why is Holy Mantle not number one or even number five? Well, Holy Mantle also nullifies items that activate upon you taking damage, like Piggy Bank or Fanny Pack. Think that's a small cost? It is. But even though in good hands, Holy Mantle is basically just permanent invincibility, it doesn't make you any stronger offensively. You can get hit and take no damage all you want, but if you can't kill what's in a room fast, you might just wear out that immunity. Number 5. Taurus. Uh, Taurus, um, uh, is insane. It activates a unicorn horn effect once every single room, once you've moved around the required distance within that room. It's a speed down, but after you pace back and forth a few times, you become the purveyor of death and obliterate everything you touch. Also, the more floors you've completed, the shorter time it takes to charge up, and the more speed upgrades you have, the less time it takes to charge up. If you're on the basement seed, you need to straight up avoid this item, because after basement 10 or so, it just activates instantly and never lets you fire a shot. It's a powerhouse, and it will kill almost anything. Number 4. Double Shot 2020. Stop laughing at me. Double Shot is the shit. It does not matter what your damage is, what your tiers are, picking up Double Shot will double your damage output. No questions asked. It lowers nothing. It raises your spirits. It's Double Shot. Number 3. Infestation 2. Infestation 2 spawns a friendly spider every time you kill an enemy. Every time. It don't matter the size of the enemy. Kill 20 flies, spawn 20 spiders. Infestation 2 lets you lead a revolution with your army of faithful arachnids at your side. You will create so many goddamn web spinners that the entire floor will glow blue as your minions set forth to do your work. Sit back on your throne, revel in your glory, and command your pets from the safety of the rear. Number 2. Stopwatch. Not broken watch, stopwatch. The thing you get after you donate 999 cents. And let me tell you, it's worth it. Stopwatch slows down every enemy in every room on every floor forever. Permanent slow. It ruins bosses. It negates masks. It stops bullets in their tracks. You are the master of time and space. Now show this peasant of a game your might. Number one. Godhead. Was there ever any doubt? Godhead is basically a way better sacred heart. Homing tiers, damage up, range up, and every tier gets an encircling aura of light that does continuous damage to enemies within it. You don't even have to hit them with a the tier. Just get close enough to bathe them in brightness and watch them shrivel up and die. Get piercing shots, get spectral tiers, make them everlasting, make the aura a lingering phenomenon worthy of worship. With every damage upgrade, the aura gets bigger, becomes all-encompassing until it fills the room with unwavering radiance. Your foes will bow to you, because you are Godhead. Now the video's not over yet. There are still a few items deserving of discussion. Here are the passive collection's honorable mentions. Rubber Cement. I really wanted to put this one in here, but it just didn't quite make the cut. Rubber Cement is a super fun item. Tears bounce off walls. It's simple, yet effective. Trap an enemy near a wall and one shot could hit four or five times. Just don't pick up Spectral Tears. Monstro's Lung. I advocate in favor of Monstro's Lung. 
Sure, it's slow in the beginning, and not that strong, but infantile items need nurturing and care before they can grow into big, strong powerhouse items, and Monstro's Lung has the potential to be a huge threat. Dead Onion. <laughs> People hate Dead Onion. They think it's misleading because it makes your tears bigger, but doesn't grant you any damage up. That's not the point! It's piercing and spectral tears! Two range upgrades will offset the downgrade completely, and thanks to boss room items like the screw and torn photo, shot speed ups are fairly common. Eventually, you'll just have big piercing and spectral tears. Soy milk. Fuck soy milk, it sucks and I hate it, and if you ever make the mistake of picking it up as a first floor item, you will spend the next 20 minutes struggling to kill a fly. Maybe, if you're already running Polyphemus, and Eve's Mascara, and Sacred Heart, and then you get it, it could be helpful. But save your idealism for the real world, where soy milk just gives you an upset stomach and the misconception that you're saving the planet. Alright everyone, thanks for watching. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.